Welcome back to another episode of Atlantic Built. I'm Spencer, and uh, this is my messy garage. So, the channel's called Atlantic Built, but I really haven't built too much. Although, back in the day, I used to build stuff. Specifically, um, exhaust systems for cars. So that brings me to today's video, and how to make a flare to seal up a donut gasket like this. So this is a, this is a gasket for like a, comes off a manifold or a header. Um, there's a flat flange on this side. And then there's obviously the angled flare on this side. So you need a tube that's like flared like this. Obviously this one is, is not very, not very good. So I drove around for an entire day to different places who said, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. And, uh, I know it's really hard to say over the phone if you can do something like that or not without actually seeing what you're up against. So by the time I got there and we went through the process, it turned out nobody was really able to do what I needed to do. So this one here, you can see how it fits. It's not very good. This here, but this one here says so test. So this is a piece that I made in the end. And I'm going to show you how I did it. It's perfect. So this is exactly what we need for this project and it needs to be repeatable. So that was another problem. When I had the, the guy who was trying to make this one, it was at like a truck shop. So they had different dies more or less, just these big mounds of uh, like a, a rounded piece of steel or whatever it is. And uh, he, would, he would press the tube down to start it as a straight section of three inch tubing. Uh, but he needed to use like three different dies to get the correct angle. So without the right angle, you're not gonna get the right seal. And also, with using multiple dies and a person doing the job, it's simply not repeatable. Like it will be repeatable, but it won't be like consistent. Like even if you look at this one here, here it looks pretty even, but like in person, uh, this is actually quite a bit shorter than this. I don't know if you can tell in the video, uh, but there you can kind of see the difference and it's on an angle and stuff. Whereas this one, this one's on the money. Um, it's like, this is, this is pretty much perfect and it seals. It's the right shape and everything. How did we get there? Well, you can see behind me, I have a press. This is, uh, my buddy, Mr. Blacksmith. He's a 50 ton, bench presser and he does a great job. He does a fantastic job. He's got a little foot pedal down here. You gotta hook it up to the air and uh, all I was missing really was the die in order to press the tube over to make this shape. That's how I made this with this right here. So this here, she's heavy. This is cold rolled round stock um, a machine shop near me, Mike's machine shop. He's in St. Antoine, New Brunswick. Really good guy. Uh, first time I ever talked to him on the phone, dealt with them, whatever. He got this done like real quick for me, uh, which was awesome because I drove around for literally a day to places that had promised or, or had said, yeah, we could do that. Or sure. We should be able to do that. But it was <laughs> literally nothing like I brought five or six pieces of, of tubing to test. That's why they all say test on them. And uh, they were all junk by the end of the day. Well, except for this one, because this one, I ran out of places to go. So <laughs> anyways, so this one concept is pretty simple. Uh, basically, I gave him a gasket like this, like a donut. Uh, I also gave him like an example piece that I had to show him and um, yeah, he, he measured the, you know, the doodad there and he turned this out of a, a, a piece of steel. Like it was a solid round stock. He spun it on his lathe and then he put a little, little lip at the bottom so that when you're done, you're done. So this one here, look at that. Like it's, uh, it won't get much better than that. And then he also, he left a little bit of wiggle room in here so that the tube wouldn't get stuck because he was like, if, if it's too tight, you press it on and, and 
you know, maybe the edge of this, this tubing here, maybe it caves in a little bit before it flares out. I don't know. We don't know. We're just flying by the seat of our pants here with this. Um, he didn't want it to get stuck on the tube, which I really appreciate because it's a really good, uh, good call. Also, just having that little shoulder there um, is huge because with the shoulder, it, it keeps the tube somewhat centered, you know what I mean? Whereas you don't have to hold it. Whereas if you had um, no shoulder, you'd really have to position this thing in the right spot where this thing, it barely has any wiggle room. I could throw like an elastic band around this and it would be dead centered, no problem. But that being said, I've got to make some more of these. I'm going to make a few of these right now and you're going to stick along for the ride and see how this works. Anyways, let's cut some tubing, throw it on the press and get to it. Don't even really remember what I said, but I think it was two and one eighth. So I'm just going to mark it there. Beauty. So that should be our two and one eighth. Yep. Perfect. It's always important to clean up the ends of these tubes. So, uh, Obviously, there's some some carnage happening here. We gotta clean that off. And then there's a little bit of burr inside, so I'm just gonna buzz that off with the die uh, grinder. Okay, so now we're all nice and clean, all cleaned up, ready to rock. Let's get over to the press. I'm going to line it up here, hopefully you can see. I'm hoping that the distance between the straight section right there and the bottom of the flare is the same as the top of the die to this. That way I can just press my piece right on, which actually looks quite a bit taller. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it. I've put some grease on it and stuff like that to kind of help facilitate the pressing action. All right, Mr. Blacksmith, show us what you got. I'm going to bring you guys in closer for the live action. Okay. So you can see here, we've made contact, right? We've got a little tiny bit of pressure going up under the old Tatamagoosh Brewing. I think I'm gonna stop there. It's pretty close. Should have put a little more lube because it is, uh, that might just be the lubricant actually, but let's see how far we are from the uh, top of the die. Oh yeah, way off. Okay, so we could probably go like an inch, three quarters, but look at that. Comes out, boom, beautiful. So that is exactly what I need. And uh, it needs a little bit of cleaning up. Like I, after doing this, I put on the belt sander, clean it up so it's nice and uh, it's nice and fresh. Wipe her off on the old jean skis, but uh, take a look. Perfect. So this would be the same results every single time. So there you have it. That's how I'm doing it. Let me know what you think in the comments below if that's how you would do it too, what I could do to improve this. But overall, I mean, aside from the material being a little soft, I think that's that's the best way, you know, that I'm going to be able to do this. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found it helpful, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, comment, like it, don't like it, whatever you want. Super like it? What's that? I don't know. You could do it. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.